In this video, we are going to be unboxing and reviewing this Crobal. It's a 14th scale all-wheel drive RC monster truck. We're going to be taking it out. We're going to be giving you an overview of what it looks like, what parts and everything is included, and going out and giving it a test drive and seeing how it does. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me doing a bunch of crawling and bashing and drifting and racing, plus product review videos and how-tos. And on the work bench today is this Crowbull. It's a 14th scale RC monster truck priced a little bit over $100, $120. Entry level, all included, everything you need all in one box. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what's in here. This is actually quite nice when you look at it here. So you have kind of standard high, uh, cheaper end RC controller, has a full instructions right here for you so that as you pull up this sticker, you're not a little bit, you're not bewildered by all the buttons and everything that's underneath it. It has a quick reference guide for everything that's underneath there before you ever get started. The truck itself looks quite nice, 14th scale, which means it is a little bit smaller than some of the bigger vehicles out there. But this is can be a really nice yard size, driveway and yard size. So this is something nice right there. More and more I'm seeing this and for some packaging and everything. They're asking you to put this, the uh, wing on once you get it. Not a big deal, usually just a couple screws. We'll go through what that takes. But this right here is really, really nice. I've only seen this once before right now. So this is not something you get with uh, every vehicle. This whole accessory kit, battery and charger, pretty standard that you're gonna get that. But to come in here and I'm seeing spare control arms, spare drive shafts, spare bushings, like, man, there's a little some tools in there. Like, I gotta get this open and see what's all really in here. But like, not only the fact that I normally say you have to have this instruction manual back here with all the parts in it, um, that way, if you do happen to break something, you know how to get the parts in order to get it fixed. But the fact that now some of these companies are actually sending you replacement parts in the bag is really a very, very nice feature and still keeping it at a nice price point. Pretty impressive here in this accessory kit. So again, uh, cross wrench, uh, Phillips screwdriver, some extra body pins, that's nice. But here is a uh, front and rear drive shaft all four control arms plus hinge pins plus the nuts and everything you need to put them on uh, wheel nuts and hexes there charger and battery and then one thing i noticed is the body looked a little plain right here from the factory right well that's because all the stickers are actually here which means you get to customize it and make it however you would like so we'll have to put that on here in a minute so we're going to get these stickers on the on the truck and the wing on it and then we're going to do an overview of what is inside the truck itself. now we're looking better we got the wing on we got the stickers on that's looking pretty good so let's look in under the hood here basically and what we see straight off the bat fairly standard layout actually it's using the same it looks like it's using the same metal chassis same control arm same a lot of same components from some similar sized 14 scale buggies that are out there on the market um, i have the Rolarlo 14 scale brushless buggy uh, it has a plastic chassis and some carbon fiber looking parts but otherwise the layout here is very very similar it's brushless this is brushed and you will want to take this uh, sticker off 
One thing you see here that has been a nice upgrade over the last couple years in these budget oriented buggies is these are oil filled front and rear shocks. We do have all those spare parts we talked about. We have really heavy, beefy dog bones in here. Nice wheelie bar. We'll have to see if we actually end up needing to use it or not. Does the truck actually have enough power to pull up on them? We have front lights. It's a two in one ESC unit along with a small servo here that is three wire, which is good because that helps you actually uh, make it easier to replace that in the future. This is a big 550 style can, big motor that's actually the same size as you'll see in much bigger vehicles, which is good because if you need to swap the motor out, you will have this part. It'll be very easy to find replacements. So we have the battery. I've actually had the battery over on the charger. It's pretty simple. You actually just slide it in here, get it all the way in that little protective pouch, pull this tight. So we're going to drive it uh, with this factory battery, the one that they provide you in here. However, from my previous experience, this system has been able to take an even more powerful 3S LiPo battery. So if we find we need extra power, we might have that solved. I've put three AA batteries here in the controller. We're going to power it on before coming over here, plugging the battery in, hitting the switch. Heard a couple beeps, front lights are on. We have steering. Woo! And we have some power too. Now, one other thing I wanna make sure that we note on here is we have a uh, throttle trim, steering rate, steering trim. One thing I'll note here is that we have a throttle trim, steering rate, and steering trim. If I turn the throttle trim down, it's actually not a trim, it's actually a limiter. So if I turn this all the way down, the thing's barely moving at this point. All right, but yet if I crank it all the way back to the right, much more powerful, right? This is really, really handy. A lot of times what I'm doing with these kind of vehicles is handing them off to kids here in the neighborhood when they want to come over and play. And I can just crank this, this down and then I don't have to worry about them breaking it because it's going to be going much slower. For us today, we're going to crank it all the way up. Now let's get the body on this thing and give it a drive. So I haven't even gotten out of the garage yet because as it turns out, uh, the tires squeal in the garage floor and that for some reason is very, very satisfying. One thing I have found true in the RC world is uh, full throttle reverse to full throttle gas to accelerate back off is horrible for an RC car and kids love to do it. So if I'm gonna hand this off to a kid in my neighborhood, I gotta make sure it does it. And you know what? It doesn't need the wheelie bar normally, but when you do that, oh, it makes the most satisfying wheelies. Oh my gosh.
there we go first run is done that was pretty fun actually i'll be honest the thing the fact that the tires squealed in the garage made me giggle that really is a thing i mean i really really had fun with that um it handles really well out in the driveway had a blast with it nice low stance kind of truggy style meant that it could actually full throttle, just turn the wheel, just yank the wheel, whichever way you want. It will not roll over. Getting into the grass, that same kind of driving did result in it flipping over multiple times. Uh, due to its size, the grass here today was a little bit of a challenge. You could definitely tell there was a speed difference on the asphalt and the paved surface versus the grass. It still handled it. It still pulled through it. You could still drive through it. But you could definitely tell that it was working a lot harder to do that. So motor's going to get a little bit hotter. Battery's going to have to work a little bit harder. Um, but it did well. It jumped well. Uh, it was, because of its size, it is a little bit hard to land with the jumps. You did see it landing and tumbling a lot. But this is the magic when it comes to these little vehicles. They weigh so little that it doesn't matter. They just bounce and keep on going. Plus, as you saw, with the accessory kit, if some of those jumps do get too bad for it, there you already have the sparks to fix it. So that's pretty awesome. This truck really is overall pretty good. You know, um, it is fun. Like I said, comes in at that 120-ish uh, dollar price point. And so pretty easy truck to pick up and be able to hand off as a gift or something to that nature. Um, I'll be very curious if long-term they actually come out with a brushless version of it. That would be really nice to see. Um, I think this thing could be a lot of fun at a skate park and I'm really, really curious to put a 3s a more powerful battery in it and see how much more fun it becomes so i am going to leave you here today if you're still looking for the vehicle that's right for you i have a whole vehicles review playlist over here please come over check that out we will see you in that video so thank you and goodbye